In this video we're going to look at defining the derivative and uh, we're going to define the derivative using limits and um, so this is sometimes called uh, the derivative by the limit process. Uh, as you can see from the screen the goal of this lesson is uh, we're going to take a function a parabola x squared minus 4x plus 5 a quadratic function and our goal is to determine the instantaneous rate of change which is called the derivative, um, which is also the slope of the line tangent to the curve. And we're going to find the derivative at a particular value, x equal to c. Or, restated, we're going to find f prime of c. And f prime of c means the derivative of the function f at c. In other words, we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change at C. So make sure that you understand that all three of these, the derivative, instantaneous rate of change, and slope of the line tangent to the curve at x equal to C, they all mean exactly the same thing. So let's see how this works. All right, so we have our quadratic function. We have the parabola graph here. And um, I have chosen a particular value. Now, in this, in this case, uh, the value that I've chosen is the value 510, but that, real, that value is irrelevant. So we're going to basically um, look at this point right here as a generic value whose coordinates are c, f of c. So we have the x value and the y value. Now, to find the instantaneous rate of change, we're going to start by choosing another point on that curve. And it doesn't matter where the point is. I'm going to randomly choose a point um, right over here. Now, the coordinates of that point, again, it's a generic point. Um, the coordinates are c plus delta x. Now, remember, delta x simply means change in x. And what it represents is the distance from the value c to the next x coordinate. So this distance right here is really the delta x. And so that's why I'm calling the next coordinate c plus delta x. And of course, the y coordinate that goes with that would be f of c plus delta x. So we have two points on the curve. Now, it would be very easy now to draw a line that connects these two points except for I didn't do a very good job. Let's erase that and see if I can do a little better job. All right, let's try that one more time. A little better. Um, so this line, as you know, the green line is a secant line. And the secant line, the slope of a secant line, will give you the average rate of change. In other words, it's just the kind of slope that you find when you're in Algebra 1, two points on a line, and you find the slope. Now, to find the slope of the line that we have right here, we take our two points, and we use the slope formula, which is right here, y2 minus, and that should be y1, over x2 minus x1. But in our coordinates, um, this is x number 2, this is y number 2, this is x number 1, and this is y number 1. So we're going to do what we would normally do. We're going to substitute those values into the slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you look at my um, work down here, this value right here is y number 2. This is y number 1. This is x number 2. And this is, whoops, sorry, let me clean that. So this is x number 2, and this is x number 1. Now, if you follow the work and simply look in the denominator, you'll see that uh, positive c and negative c will subtract out, and I'll be left with delta x in the denominator. Didn't clean up anything in the numerator. Now, remember, our goal was to find the slope of the tangent line because we want the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line, or the instantaneous rate of change. So if I come back up here and let's draw a tangent line, 
the, the line, the slope that we really want is the slope of this line right here. Now that's not a perfect tangent line, but you get the idea. We're touching um, at the blue point C, F of C. That is the goal. That's the slope that we want. If you take a look at the green line, you can see, that, well, both lines have a positive slope, but the green line has a greater slope than the red line. So finding the slope of the green line will not necessarily accomplish what we want to accomplish. So how could we make the slope better? Well, we could obviously choose another point on the curve that's closer to the original point. We could draw a secant line through those two points. And now we have um, another secant line whose slope is actually closer to the slope that we're looking for, but it's not the exact slope that we're trying to find. What can we do to make the uh, approximation better? We could choose a point closer to the point that we're trying to find um, the derivative of, draw another secant line between those two, and you can see that as we decrease the delta x, the slopes of those lines, those secant lines, are getting closer to the slope of the line that we're looking for, which is the slope of the tangent line. So ultimately, we really don't want to have any delta x because we're trying to find the slope at a particular value. So to accomplish this, we need to let delta x be 0. We want no distance between the second point on the curve and the point that we're trying to find the derivative of. However, that creates a problem because if you look at our slope formula that we have here, we can't let delta x be 0 because division by 0 is undefined. So that's why this, it, the statement says we want the slope of the tangent line to the curve at C and we want no delta x. Well, what's the issue? Division by 0 is undefined. So what do we do? We can't let delta x equal 0, but we can let delta x approach 0 and there's where we come up with our idea of using limits. So we take the distance between those two points on the curve and we decrease delta x and decrease delta x, decrease delta x infinitely um, so that the distance between the two points is approaching zero. And so if we take our slope formula, which we have right here, move that out of the way, and so the derivative the slope of the tangent line at C, so we're finding the derivative at C, is the limit as delta x approaches 0. Now bear in mind that this right here, this is just the slope formula. That's just basic algebra 1 slope formula where again we have y2 minus y1 and the delta x is already x2 minus x1. Remember we had already cleaned that up. This is the definition limit definition of the derivative at a particular value c. This is the slope of the line if we calculate it out and we will do that uh, later. Uh, this is the slope of the line tangent to the curve at a particular value c. It's the instantaneous rate of change of the function at c. Now uh, we can use this is this is what I'll call a point specific definition. In other words, it will find the derivative only at a particular point. It will find the slope of the tangent line at a particular point, and in this case it's point, point specific at C, whatever number we choose. Very often we'll want to find the derivative of a function, and instead of finding it at a particular value C, we'll want to find the derivative in general. So the general derivative, general derivative would look very similar with one small change. It would be the limit as delta x approaches 0. Now, by the way, delta x, sometimes in some books or some lessons you'll see, instead of delta x, um, often the letter h is used. Instead, instead, delta x is just treated like a variable. So the limit is delta x of f of x plus delta x. Now, notice the difference. Instead of using a c, I'm using x, which now makes it 
in general, any value of x, whereas at c is a particular value of x, minus f of x, the function itself, over delta x. So this will give you a general def, uh, derivative, whereas uh, when you use c, you get a point-specific derivative. All right, and so you can see that what I just stated, I've rewritten up here, the, the derivative of a function in general, and I often call it a slope generator because what it, what you, when you actually calculate this out, you basically get a formula for a function that will generate the slope at any value that you want. So in general, again, remember it's in general because we're using an x instead of a c, an x, and an x. It will find the derivative of any value of x. This is a function that generates the slope of a tangent line at any value of x on f. And um, the notations, this may be new to some of you, um, for finding the derivative, the first one is to find f prime of x. That simply means the derivative of f of x. Another notation would be dy d for delta, so change in y over change in x, dy dx. Another one would be y prime. Another one would be, the, it, this is just like dy dx. Remember, f of x is a fancy name for y, so kind of the same thing, dy dx. But all of these notations simply indicate to find the derivative of the function f. All right, let's take a look at a practice problem. We have a parabola, it's different from the, or a quadratic function, it's different from the one that we had before, and we're going to find the derivative of this function in general, and we know it's in general because we're finding f of x plus delta x. All right, so let's walk through this. To find the derivative, f prime of x, we're going to use our derivative, our limit process, which is really just using slope, the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of. Now, it says that we're supposed to find f of x plus delta x. So I'm going to follow this as my model. The first thing I'm going to do is find f of x plus delta x. Now remember, if you're finding f of 2, you would simply substitute a 2 into the function everywhere that there's an x. So in this case, I'm going to substitute an x plus delta x into the function everywhere that there's an x. So I'm going to substitute it here and here. So I would have x plus delta x squared minus x plus delta x minus 12. Now what I just accomplished right there was f of x plus delta x. So I'll even un maybe put a highlight right over that so you can see. The purple corresponds with the purple. Now, following the formula, the next thing that I'm going to do, and again, this is just slope formula. This is y number 2. Minus, the next thing it says is subtract the function itself. So in this case, let's change that to yellow. So the function itself is x squared minus x minus 12. So if we highlight that, that's that part of the formula. And then we're going to divide by, following the formula, delta x. Bear in mind, all we just did was y number 2 minus y number 1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now it becomes basically an algebra problem. So the derivative of the function is the limit as delta x approaches 0. I'm going to square the binomial x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus 12. That takes care of the purple highlighted part. I'm going to just, you know what I didn't do? Let's back up again. It's early in the morning when I'm doing this, so I need to wake up a little bit. Let's try algebra again. I'm going to square this first term, so I have x squared plus... 2x delta x minus plus delta x squared. Now I'm going to distribute the negative minus x minus delta x minus 12. That's much better. 
Now I'm going to distribute the negative into the second term and I get minus x squared plus x plus 12 and that's all over delta x. Again, just doing some algebra cleaning up. Right, when I combine like terms in the numerator, x squared will subtract out with x squared. Um, negative x will subtract out with positive x. Negative 12 will subtract out with positive 12. And if you look at the terms in the numerator, you'll notice that every term in the numerator has a delta x in it. So I'm going to factor that delta x out, and that'll leave me with 2x plus delta x minus 1 over delta x. The delta x's will subtract out. Now I can substitute 0 in for delta x. And if I do, I'll end up with 2x minus 1, which is the derivative of the function in general, which is what I wanted. This is a slope generator. So for example, if I wanted now to know the derivative of the quadratic function at 2, I would substitute 2 into the slope generator. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. Now graphically speaking, let's insert a page here. All right, so my slope generator, if I go, let's write down our two functions here. We had uh, x squared minus x minus 12. That's the function. And we had the slope generator or the derivative in general. The function is 2x. I must have copied that wrong. No, I didn't. 2x minus 1. And then I calculated the derivative at 2, which was 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. All right, so graphically speaking, I'm not going to actually uh, draw this. In fact, I won't even put an axis. So we know that we have a parabola that opens up, so it looks something like that. All right, let's assume that at this point right here, this is an x value of 2. And that would be 2, let's see, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, minus 12 is negative 10, if I calculated that correctly. Let me check it in. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 12 is negative 10. All right, so this is a point on the parabola. And I got, got this out of the original function, so this is f of x. Now we used the derivative to calculate the slope of the line tangent to the curve at 2. So if I draw the tangent line to the curve at 2, the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equal to 2 is 3. That is the derivative derivative of f of x at x equal to 2, or slope of the tangent line. So visually, that's what's going on. So hopefully, you can take a look. If you still have questions, you can view the video again if you're still not quite sure. But this is just really the development of the definition of derivative using the limit process. Um, bear in mind that derivative is slope. And in the end, if you look at the definition of the derivative, if we go back here, it really just boils down to slope, where this is y number 2 minus y number 1 over x2 minus x1. So hopefully you'll find this video uh, help you to understand the development of that definition.